Hey guys, it's Trent. Hope everyone's been well. We're going to do something a little bit different for this video. Instead of like the image evaluations that we've had for the last few, we're actually going to jump straight into a, a technique and that's how to get epic sunset portraits with a studio light. You guys can be of any experience level to watch this video, but ideally you should be able to know how to manipulate your camera and use a studio strobe or speed light guys. So follow through with me uh, as much as you can. If there's anything that you guys aren't fully aware of right now, this, this movie's being archived, watch it in the future, learn a little bit more about studio lighting. Um, I'm sure there's going to be videos that I release in the future that talks a little bit more about studio lighting, but, um, trust me when you guys do this, you're going to love it. A lot of people are floored by how easy it is to shoot outside during a sunset and get crazy epic results. Notice that, you know, epic is capitalized in the title for a reason. It's very saturated. It's very colorful. That's how nature looks. And it's very, very, very easy to get. Uh, before we move on, um, I want to go ahead and say thank you to Suresh. He's a fellow Patreon. Um, thank you, Suresh, for the support. Uh, he's watched the last few videos I've done, and he's gave, given very, very, um, very great comments concerning it. He loves them, but he wanted me to do a couple of things more, like a you know, actually organize it. So I show the final image, um, post-processing wants me to talk about that. So we're going to actually going to cover a lot more in this video than we normally do. And hopefully it's a little bit more organized. So Suresh, thank you. Um, you know, leave a comment buddy and, but everyone else to leave a comment. Um, because I'm pretty excited. This is, this is the exact type of videos I want to do along with the image evaluations. You know, let's just go ahead and let's move forward and let's talk about this technique. All right, let me change screens here so you guys see this. What you're gonna notice is three images on the left. Uh, Kim and Madison are the model. Kim is the uh, Kim is a blonde. Madison in the, in the large picture you see now is the person who is underexposed in the background. So when I talk to them, well, Madison, the easiest way to do this is Madison's in the white dress, Kim is in the black dress. So let's talk about these three images and why, why they're up there. Um, let me go and cycle through them real quick. This is a sequence of images, the three you see on the left. And just so you guys know, the first or the second one, well, the first one is the test image. And I'll talk about that in just a second. The second was the image that I've chosen to be the final image or the portfolio image. There's actually several shots I've used from this shoot, but this is, the, let's say this is the one that I selected. Um, this is how it looks off camera. And then the very last one is the final picture, the edits, what I've done and so forth. So let's go ahead and go back to this shot right here, guys. Okay. This shot isn't a perfect hundred percent example of what I'm going for guys, but let's go ahead and talk about it. When you're taking pictures of a sunset in the background with the studio strobe, it's actually very, very, very easy. And let me tell you, tell you why guys. I'll tell you why guys. Um, when you take your first shot, don't turn your studio strobe on at all. Just take a shot and expose your camera for the background. And so beater the background, do whatever you need to do to go ahead and get that background pop properly exposed to what you want. And then also, um, you know, just whatever aperture you might want to shoot. So my suggestion is if you're trying to get the, uh, you know, you're trying to get a sunset in the background, you're probably around ISO 400, ISO 800 F you know, F11, F, um, F8 at one, one sixtieth, one two hundredth of a second. It varies. Exposures can be, you know, here or there, but roughly around those numbers. So try to figure it out. The main thing you want to remember is your shutter speed cannot be faster than one two hundredths of a second or one over 200. So do not go faster than one over two hundredths of a second. I got to figure out how to real not do touch with this program and just do pen. But anyways, going back to that, the reason why it's important not to get uh, over one two hundredths of a second is if you guys ever take a photo with a flash, doo -doo -doo, and I'm going to pretend this is a frame. You take a picture of a person like that, and all of a sudden there's a black bar on the bottom. That's because you've broke your sync speed. And that black bar, let's say this is one over 250. That black bar is your sec or when you, um, let me go ahead and technically explain it so you guys just know why this happens in the future. 
when you take a picture, your shutter opens, but what happens is one shutter or one shutter opens, then you get the, uh, the shot and then another shutter closes. If your shutter speeds too fast, you're picking up that other shutter closing and that's what's happening. And so that's why you have to be at one, two hundredths of a second or lower. All right. So when you guys take that first shot, you're getting, you're purposely under, or you're purposely exposing for the background. You're not going to have your subject. Um, ideally the sun's behind them. So your subject's either going to be pitch black or not very bright. In this case, this is why this picture is a little bit off. The flash is on and it's very, very weak. Unfortunately from this shoot, I don't, I tend to erase those initial shots where I expose for the background and not the subject. I get it done and then I start shooting. In this case, fortunately, I had a picture that was underexposed. So I wanted to show it as an example of the background, um, not or of an exposure for the background. All right. So once again, you take a picture with the background, um, with the background exposed correctly or exposed to what you want. And then here's the thing. Don't expose it a hundred percent correctly. It's your choice. It's, you know, how much, how saturated you want it to be. My suggestion is actually expose it or do the exposure just a little bit lower and that's going to make the sky a little bit bluer. Um, if you do too high, then the longer the exposure, the brighter the sky becomes. And so it's just, it's a mixture of finding what works for you. Uh, but you know, do that via shutter speed or do that via, um, via um, ISO, you know, whatever, ex whatever you want to change your exposure to. All right. So here's an, here's why it's really easy guys. If your subject's pure, you know, really dark and you're exposed for the background, well, you know that any light you introduce is just going to be added on to the scene. If it's too bright, lower the power. If it's too dark, increase the power. So in this case, let's say I turned on the flash and this picture you see in front of you right here, that's the shot that I got. Well, that means, you know, Hey, it's a little bit too dark on them. Let me increase the power of the flash. The cool thing about increasing the power of the flash is it lights your subject, but it doesn't light everything. So your exposure tends to stay the same in the background scenes. Um, but on your subject it increases. If you don't change any of your uh, other settings, if you keep your aperture, your ISO, your shutter, uh, your shutter speed the same, then you should get an identical shot as you shoot. And what you're doing is increasing or decreasing the power of your flash. Let's go to the next image here. And so with this one, I used the soft box outside. Um, I had it on a studio strobe. I just put it up there. It's about like a 48. Uh, this one is, I believe an Octobox. Uh, so this was like a 48 inch Octobox or a 60, 60 inch Octobox. Um, and it's just right on my uh, camera. You can camera left because you can tell with the shadow from Madison here. Um, what I try to do is I try to counter where the sun's coming from, but with the sun directly behind them, um, I didn't really worry about it too much. And so the can uh, going back to dissecting the light again, uh, the flash is a little bit high, roughly around right there, Octobox, and it's right on them. Once again, here's where it's really easy. I'm going to go ahead and just push the point in the future. I'm going to actually show you guys like in real time how this is done, but it's cold. It's nasty out here in January in Georgia, there's still ice in the ground. So I'm not going to make these outside videos until later. Uh, I'm just going to talk about it in pictures here. Okay. So when you, um, when you take the picture and the flash is not on, you know, you get your background exposure. But when you do t or with the flash on, if it's too bright, you lower your flash power. If it's too dark, you increase your flash power. It's that easy guys. And so in this case, I like the exposure uh, of the shot. This is how it came off straight off camera. And so this is what, uh, this is what I was working on. The cool part about that is now since I'm locked in, with my studio strobe and with the background, you only have a limited amount of time that you can take pictures while that sun's setting. And so that's where you go through your various poses and so forth. Uh, technique wise guys, uh, my suggestion is don't, I'm mean, excuse language. Don't fuck yourself over 
by overcomplicating thing and moving the moving lights when you're shooting the sunset set it up and shoot and shoot and try different poses set up your environment set up your scene and just shoot various poses and until you get it or until you get a good sequence of shots because you're working with 15 to 20 minutes of ideal sunset light maybe a little bit more um you know but still you don't necessarily have that much time the fu the fun thing though is once you learn how to shoot your first shot where you're exposing the background uh correctly and then your second shot with the studio strobe it becomes uber easy to set up these epic um these epic shots outside with sunset and it, it just it becomes super easy because your first shot is correctly exposing the background your second shot is correctly exposing the foreground um in the future once again i'll do a very thorough video on how to get that that's going to only be available to people of a certain uh access level but it's going to be worth it all right so guys looking at this image uh, let's go ahead and more on the critiquing the image side the technicalities um it's a 24 to 70 lens it's sort of a wider um a wider lens um background and so forth angle wise there is a reason why i'm shooting at a slightly lower angle i love their pose i love the strong like uh just the strong model factor and if you lower your position slightly uh than your subject's eye level it gives them a position of slight dominance over you over the viewer of the image so it gives them an air of power uh, so that's me sort of slightly ducking and shooting maybe about three feet off the uh off the floor there uh the idea is kim on the left in the black dress has a plethora of um just prom or not prom dresses but just pageant dresses because she used to be a pageant model and so we wanted to go for a kind of this beautiful look beautiful dresses but in more of like a decay background with with the sunset so i've i love this sh this shoot we did this about four years ago actually three years ago still love it so you know i just really wanted to cover this one all right so other technicalities when it comes to that i'm trying to look here uh, well, let's go talk a little bit more about lighting once again a bigger light source creates softer shadows we've talked about that in a few other videos uh so that was important there i wanted soft shadows i will go ahead and be honest here guys when you use a big light source it kills the amount of power that your strobe puts out so a person with a speed light can go out there but a speed light doesn't put that much power out at full power on a speed light guys uh, you're getting roughly about 1 20th the power that my studio strobe can put out at full power. And so your, um, you know, a studio or a speed light is very, very weak unless you don't modify it at all. If you modify it, if you put an umbrella on it or anything like that, uh, be ready to be, you know, ha or use a smaller light source and thus get harsher shadows. But if you use it uh, without a modifier, if you use it just directly as a, um, you know, just a small light source, then those things can put out a lot of light and you can do shoots like this um, without an issue. All right. And so going to the final image of how this looks, this is the edit that I did to it, guys. Um, so we're cycling through it here. And some of the things that stand out, um, is there is little tucking uh once again if you look at madison's waist over here that's tucked in if you look at kim that's um tucked in and brought out her butt's made a little bit bigger uh there is a vignette that's put on to it uh, doo -doo -doo, wrong one sorry uh there is a vignette the reason why a vignette's there and you know take a note of this everyone who's listening is the human vision goes to the brightest part of a scene. Uh, my belief as a photographer, as a photography instructor, is you can do whatever the hell you want, but there are certain cues that uh, that just work. And so if you're aware of them, they actually, uh, they actually help quite a bit. Uh, our eyes go for the shiny. Our eyes go for contrast, frames the element, but the shiny, the shiny bright part is what we tend to be attracted to eyes eye wise so a vignette 
brings your attention to what um, you want the viewers to look at. In this case, I like I actually like this guy. So it's it's arguable about like, hey, which one would you choose? But with this one, I wanted to bring the emphasis into the subject, the two models, because other factors included too, this composition wise, is their position is the sweeping, uh, the sweeping form right here leads the leads you into them. So this was actually done on purpose with the vignette and with the clouds, it actually is composed. So it brings you into the two. Ideally, I wish these clouds were a little bit more to the left, but Hey, say la vie where I will like talk about, you know, your eyes are going to the brightest part of an image. Everyone close your eyes and, you know, open them back up. And a few of you guys will notice this shit over here. It's a rock, it's not trash, but I should have removed that. It's one of those things that in post could have helped this picture a lot more. I'm lazy. I'm not going to do it right just yet. I'm going to leave it up with faults, but just, um, you know, if you guys, I'll read my images. So just so you know, once again, close your eyes, wait a few seconds, open them back up and it won't be long until you notice things like this. So the reason why I mentioned that is, you know, look at your images and see if there's things like that, that stand out, that detract from the meat of the image and contribute really nothing more to the image or takes away your viewer's attention. Um, if you're able to minimize things like that or able to control it, then that's going to make your, um, make your images stronger. So let me go ahead and, uh, make sure it's been a while since I've looked at this image. I'm going to see other things I may have, uh, I may have edited. Uh, what you may have noticed, I didn't really remove things like these stray rocks or so on. Of course, that's something that I would definitely look at. Um, to remove, there is a color change. Uh, there is a warmth that's added to the final. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it makes the image stronger or weaker. Um, it was part of probably a, um, a filter that I set up a long time ago or so on. And so if anyone's wondering, Hey, should I do that with my photos? Color to me is extremely subjective. I do prefer a warmer palette, uh, comparatively to a cooler palette, but you know, it's, that's just personal preference. Um, concerning you guys, actually something I will note is notice here and not as much here, but right there, I brought some of that tone back in, um, through burning the dress. So it actually creates a little bit more detail. So once again, going back here and going to there, so that's the post on it guys, but let's talk, let's go let's rewind it back a little bit and let's talk about lighting here. Um, cause that's, that's what this video is about. All right. So once again, your first shot that you take, let me go ahead and erase some of this, you know, I'm going to go here, sketch, don't save that. All right. So we got your, uh, we got your first image here, guys. And so when you take your picture, don't use the flash for your first shot Expose for the background. So exp uh, I can't write expose for God, this right hand, right background. I'm only doing this just to show that I can write on screen. Yes, I'm actually writing with a pen on screen and guess what? My handwriting still looks like it sucks. I promise in real life, my handwriting is actually not that bad. Okay, let me take a swig of water here, guys. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys, this actually trick works in everywhere you use a studio light. Take your first picture without your studio lights on. If you don't see anything, that's great because it means when you turn the studio lights on, only the studio lights matter. So if you're shooting in the studio for the first time and you really, really want to know if your studio lights doing anything, turn it or turn it off, take a picture. If you see nothing, that's great. Cause if you take a shot with the studio light and you see it and it doesn't look great, but you see something, then you know, the studio light is the only light that matters because it's the only light that's lighting the scene. All right, going, I digress. Let's go back to into it. Going back to the first shot, you know, quick summary, take your first shot exposed for the, uh, um, exposed for the background. Don't, you know, don't turn on your studio light. Second shot. When you take it, turn on the studio light and then see how it affects the foreground how it affects your subject. If it's too bright, lower the power. If it's too dark, 
increase the power. Don't change the settings on your camera. All you want to do is change the power on your flash. Another trick that if you guys don't know is if you move your flash physically closer to your subject, it gets brighter. If you physically move it further away from your subject, it gets darker. Those are quick ways you can easily do it. And if you move your light closer to your subject, it becomes a bigger light source. Away from the subject, it becomes a smaller light source. Um, as time goes by, with your um, as the sun starts setting and gets a little bit darker, here's another tip. Your shutter speed does not affect how bright the strobe is. It only affects how bright the background is. So if you start at 1 60th of a second, or 1 1 60th of a second, you can go as low as 1 25th of a second as the sequence, go, sequence goes and the light gets darker. As you do that, as you take, you know, your 15 shots, your 20 shots, your 100 shots, you know, photographers vary on how many photos they take, lower your shutter speed. And as you lower the shutter speed, as it gets darker, you either equal to the exposure difference as it, you know, as the exposure changes for the background, or you get various different results in the brightness and the darkness of the background. Okay, and so that leads into the final picture and the last, you know, a few other things that we're gonna talk about. I like the clarity of the clouds in the background, uh, which comes with a wide angle lens. And also, you don't have to shoot at 2.8. You don't have to shoot at F2. Shooting at F11 or F8 guarantees some sharpness in the background. It's pretty cool. I suggest guys that you try, you know, you can do this shot with your kit lens that comes with your crop camera, your hundred dollar kit lens, it'll work. And so it's just one of those things. Try it out. All right, guys, this video, um, it's just a start of something more on the technical side, things that I definitely want to do. Suresh, I hope that I covered a little bit more about what you want. Um, but I know it's not a hundred percent, um, of everything. There's future video videos, guys, are going to be a little bit more organized, a little bit better. Um, I'll go ahead and admit this. I don't have scripts in front of me. I have basic bullet points I want to cover, but Hey, this is how I work. So as I do the more and more of these, they're going to get better. But, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for all the people who are leaving comments, leave critiques. It's being listened to. Um, and so that leads into to do to do. Let me change this. The Patreon. I reorganized it guys. Uh, Patreon actually has some pretty cool things with it. Could use your contribution, could use your support to keep this on going. Become a patron if you guys can. The minimum one is just like $2 a month. I think you guys should do it. Here's why. I put an image up, I talk about it, I do things like that, but it's a high resolution image that you're welcome to download, look at, dissect, comment about. And as your Patreon level or your contributions increase, the content that you're able to see also increases. Um, the $50 Patreon amount, I don't expect a lot of people to do it, but the $50 Patreon amount actually has a batch of high resolution photos that you can download and a video that will accompany it. Um, in this case, the model that was in the January's rose she was perfectly fine with it and is really happy about future sessions where further patrons can get access to these high resolution photos, you know, education videos talking about it and just, Hey, you have high resolution photos. Some of you guys out there just love seeing pretty people and seeing photos. And I'm perfectly fine with that. So with that guys, go to my Patreon If you guys can uh, give a contribution also, Use my Amazon referral link that will be attached to this video. Cost you nothing if you don't want to do Patreon, but you buy a lot of stuff from Amazon. Well, if you don't use anyone else's referral link, please use mine. Gives me a slight kickback on anything you guys buy, but once again, doesn't increase the price that you have to pay or anything like that. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Check out the next few ones coming out this week, and I'll talk to you guys later.